Hey guys, if you haven't read, watched or know about Good Omens, then I highly recommend adding it to your next reading or watch list. Because ineffable though my projects are, you've probably figured out that this week's project is of course the loveliest of all angels, Aziraphale, who will henceforth be known as Angel. Let's get right into it. Angel's colour palette is, as with his other co-angels, mostly beige, greys, tans and other light shades. He actually wears a very light green minty shirt, but I chose this darker mint for his woolly version because, well, it will show up more on camera and I couldn't quite find the right shade to get a true colour match and this was the closest I could get. I will of course leave a full list of all the materials I used in the description box below as always. In the reference picture I'm using, this one, Angel is wearing orange shoes. Yeah, I know, it's a little incongruous and a few steps away from the rest of the Fifty Shades of Beige colour palette, but then again, so are his red socks. I just glossed over that fact and made the shoes with a brighter orange than I liked, because I couldn't for the life of me find my more muted orange yarn. Anyway, I created a cardboard template for the soles of the shoe and cut out some self-adhesive corkboard. The template is actually useful because then I can reuse it and I don't have to keep wondering and guessing and redrawing the shoes each time. I then glued the shoes onto the corkboard by adding extra glue to the existing adhesive and set them each aside to dry. After the glue was fully cured, I went ahead and added several thin coats of polyacrylic sealant to really make them sturdy. I set them to one side to dry and that's the shoes all done. Okay, so if you remember that reference image I was using, it shows his red socks. It was only after I had already decided that I'd match his socks to his shirt colour and was having another look that I realised this. At this point, it was too late to change the sock colour, so my angel just has mint green socks. I'm pretty sure angels are big on cleanliness, so he's bound to have more than one pair of socks on hand. <laughs> Moving swiftly on, next I joined the legs together and switched to the colour I would be using for the trousers. Crocheting the trousers follows the same principles as crocheting a skirt, the only difference being that once you get to the right length, i.e. past the groin area, you just split the skirt in half and crochet down the length of one leg and then the other. Doing the trousers this way reduces bulk as you don't need to use any closures or velcro and you get a closer fit to the amigurumi. The downside is that you're kind of locked into that one outfit. There's pluses and minuses to each decision made, I guess. So in the long run, the decision is entirely up to you. After completing the trousers, I switched the yarn colour to the mint green and carried on up the torso. In hindsight, I really should have switched to the waistcoat colour and then do some colour changes at the chest and neck area for the shirt. 
I'm always trying to reduce bulk, but I just spaced out on this one, I guess. I'm <laughs> I've, I've no idea what happened, but I guess I just had tunnel vision on the shirt color and completely forgot my plan. Swiftly moving on, I added the arms and then carried on to complete the head. The extra time I had bought myself doing the waistcoat then just got consumed when I got to the hair. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, this was a complete and utter nightmare. I wasn't really sure how to approach his hair and at one point I considered doing a platinum blonde afro a la forecast with the loop stitch but that wasn't quite right either. I needed his hair to go all over the place but also remain short. I think in the end I made three or possibly four attempts to make his hair and I hated the lot of them. I gave up filming the wig cap after the third attempt and then promptly forgot to film the one I actually settled on. My apologies for that guys but I was getting really frustrated and honestly a little stressed because I just couldn't get his hair right. I eventually just had to put the wig cap away and take a break from it for a while. Yes, it may be odd to take a break while struggling to feed the algorithm on time, but honestly, if you hit a brick wall, I just think it's better to walk away and not think about it for a while. Reset your mind and when you come back to the project, you look at it in a different way and find a better solution. I'm now so happy with his hair, it's just the perfect balance of order with a little bit of chaos thrown in for good measure. The cuteness factor on this just went over 9,000. Am I right? Anyone agree with me? No? Anyone? Okay, so it's fashion time. Now, my first attempt to reduce bulk with the waistcoat ended in disaster. I thought using some crochet thread would make the waistcoat thinner, but it didn't really pan out. I would probably have to have gone with the sewing thread instead and do some micro crochet to get it as thin as I wanted, but at this point, I was running out of time and I really didn't have the patience for that. So I came up with a solution that I'm actually a little bit proud of, <laughs> if I say so myself. And I guess that's why this part didn't really quite hurt so much. Well, it did, but not as much. I unraveled the other attempt and decided to just crochet the front half of the waistcoat. You know, it's like in 3D modeling, only model what will be seen. And since Angel will be wearing his jacket, I don't actually need the back of the waistcoat. Anyway, I crocheted the waistcoat off camera and sewed in tiny pearl beads for the buttons. I then attached the whole thing onto Angel's torso. I'm actually really pleased with myself for that. <laughs> I'm just gonna pat myself on the back here. Um, I'm not going to turn him around because there's nothing to see here. Well, it's green, it's all green. <laughs> For the jacket, I used a greyish 
beige-ish yarn and crocheted the main body of the jacket leaving holes for the sleeves. Angel's jacket is quite long so I crocheted the rest of that length off camera. I then went back and did the right and left sleeves. Hang in there guys, we're nearly done. The last crucial part to Angel's outfit is of course his bow tie. Bow ties are cool. This actual bow tie is a mix of all the colours he wears combined for the forces of good. <laughs> I couldn't, sorry, I couldn't get through that. But at this scale, I felt I could get away with just using the waistcoat colour. Using the DMC yarn I used for the waistcoat, I crocheted some double crochets into a magic ring. That was literally it. This is a really simple bow and using the end tail, I wrapped that around the middle to create a tiny bow. It's so cute, it's so diddy, it's so tiny. The bow tie was the last thing that needs to be done. So while I make sure it's all nice and accurate for him, I'd just like to thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and even consider subscribing if you like the content I create. Don't forget to eat that bell button to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Enjoy my take on this book-loving angel in all his goodliness and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!